Hello everybody. Today, I wanna to have a discussion about fluid extractors. Some people use turkey basters when trying to change brake fluid or change other miscellaneous automotive chemicals. But today, I wanna to show you something different. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I greatly appreciate you stopping by. If you're a returning subscriber, much appreciate appreciate you just as much. Uh, today I wanna have a discussion and show you how to use a fluid extractor. I need to change the clutch fluid on my Mustang. For some reason it's got water in it. I'm not really sure why. So I need to be able to extract it out. A lot of people would use something like a turkey baster is the easiest and cheapest way of going about it. I included have used those in the past. My biggest problem with them is I don't, I normally throw them in the trash can. So every time I need to do a job like this one kind of just popped up. I was just checking fluids in my Mustang here while I was sitting, make sure everything looked good and realize there was water in it and I want to get it out. Well, now I don't want to wait till tomorrow to go get a turkey baster from the store. So I wanted something I could wash out clean and keep in my drawer for jobs like this. Just, I wanted to go over it. I decided to get on Amazon and the internet. And uh, there's a bunch of companies that make these, but they all basically look the same. So this is made by a company, OMT. So it's a fluid extractor. I believe you could probably use it to put fluids in as well. So it comes with this. I'm sure there was instructions. I got this a couple of months ago. I never used it. I got it after the fact of me changing my brake fluid. So I just, I ended up pitching it. I did keep the box to keep it in. Um, so it comes with a bigger straw which goes right on here and it has a locking end. So as you can see, straw goes in and it locks in place. So you can see it pulls out. You actually gotta hold this to release it. So I don't have to worry about this end, this hose coming out. It also has an adapter. It has the cap on the end for if you're just gonna use the big straw or you can adapt it down if it's a smaller hole. You can put this rubber adapter on and they give you a smaller straw Put right on that adapter so i mean is it necessary no but maybe you've got a really really small hole to get into and you can just use the smaller straw in today's case i'm just going to use the bigger one that's a pretty nice seal they have there it has a nice cap so basically all it is is just like a syringe like a needle would be extract put the pull it up out put the cap on take it over to whatever you're going to put it in like a container and then take off the cap and push it out. So simple enough. You can work it in reverse if you're trying to fill something. It might be a little slow, but I think this would be something good for differentials where it holds a couple quarts. So this is a 200 milliliter. So 200 milliliters, a thousand is, is just a little over a quart. So I mean, if you're changing a rear end fluid, say this car I have, or even my pickup truck, they don't normally hold more than three quarts. So you're gonna fill this thing up what, 12 times? I end up making a mess everywhere every time I change the stuff or even have to add any. So I think this is a, a good alternative to be able to fill something up as well. Use as directed, that's not how they direct to use it. I would 100% do it that way. So uh, let's go ahead, get over to my car. I'll show you the container I have is really, really small for the clutch fluid. So you won't see a whole lot come out, but it holds a little bit and I wanna get it out. Brake fluid's very corrosive. You wanna keep it off the paintwork. So I. I want to go ahead and give this a shot and see what it works and uh, see how it cleans up. So let's get over to the car. All right, so here's my clutch reservoir. It's not very big. There's the brake reservoir, just to kind of give you in perspective how small it is. So it's not a lot of fluid, but you can see there's a bunch of white gunk in there. I think that's sludge from water getting in the fluid. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and extract that. You can see all the paper towels. Once again, brake fluid's very corrosive. So you wanna keep it off your paintwork. All right, so I have this extractor here. So you can see, tube in, lids off. I'm gonna go ahead. Wow, that thing looks fantastic. That's way better than turkey baster. Just cause I can keep trying to pull more out. Must have got a 
I still got a little, a little bit of air in it somewhere here. So let's go ahead, try that again. So it all went back in. I don't like that. Do it a little slower this time. See all the air bubbles here. So everything is still creating a suction. That's good. You can actually see the fluid goes right up in there. So this straw almost isn't necessary until you know, it starts flowing back in. What's nice, as soon as you stick it back in the fluid, it starts sucking again because of the suction of air. So go ahead, keep straightening out here. It is dribbling back in, but put the lid on, that'll do it. Get it on my fingers, don't get it on your paint, don't touch your paint. I'll put my fingers. Yeah, I mean, worked pretty good. As you can see, very minimal fluid left in there. It's very, it's right at the bottom. You know, it's gonna dribble out a little bit. Nothing's 100% perfect. You know, this thing was 15 bucks, so, you know, we don't wanna, can't expect a ton for 15 bucks, but I mean, this job worked pretty good. So let's take you back over to the, we'll take you over and show you how I wash it out. Have you subscribed yet? Are you new to the channel? Please hit the like button, hit the notification bell. If you want to see more content like so, greatly appreciate it. All right, so we're over here at the sink. You just watch me extract all that. And this is the biggest reason. Yes, you can reuse turkey basters, but I'm not going to. I would just throw them out. So, but I wanted to have something to keep in my drawer. I kept the box for this. so. Just go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and clean it. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead. This tube doesn't just pull off. So you get a push in on the little blue flare there and it releases that. So we'll go ahead and set that in the tank, take the lid off, set it off to the side there so we don't lose it because it'll go down the drain. And then the syringe part here just unscrews. So we'll go ahead, unscrew that. So you can see, now I have complete access to clean it. Something a turkey baster doesn't really give you a lot of ability to do. So just go ahead, rinse this out with warm water. Turn down the pressure here a little bit. We'll get a little bit of water in the straw here. Clean that out. wipe all this off here yes there's grease on it what we'll do is we'll re-grease it out before we put it away I got you know really any grease would probably work and probably go without grease now that's been greased once there was grease in the bottom too so let's go ahead clean that off good so it don't eat up all the seals real bad clean this up probably a little bit of overkill that's it turn the water off that back in there just like that screw it back on you're good to go that's that's how you reassemble it I'm gonna go ahead and leave it apart take it back over here to the bench and uh, finish up on the conclusions I'll let all right so final thoughts uh, work pretty good I'm gonna actually while I'm talking to you I'll go ahead and sit here and dry this I'll actually dry it off with some paper towels here so final thoughts uh, Works good. Uh, I like it. Now I can just clean it up, throw it in the drawer, and I got it for the next time. I can use it to fill things. I can use it to take things out. Like I said, I'm not saying you can't use a turkey baster. I've used them for years. They work great. But like I said, I was looking for something that I could do, um, keep in my drawer, and do a little more than a turkey baster gives me. You know, a turkey baster doesn't have caps. They don't have small straws like this. You know, this is this worked pretty good. I was a little disappointed at the fact that it leaked a little. So you gotta kinda watch pulling it out. Um, that was the first time I'd actually used it, so you guys got to see firsthand. You know, 15 bucks on Amazon. It's not g game changing technology here, you know, it, but it, it does it does make things a little easier. So, uh, that yeah, that, I mean, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for this. Like I said, 15 bucks. Uh, it's worth having, I think, uh, for filling and extracting. Um, you're trying to keep from making a mess, a turkey baster. I can keep sucking with this. I think that's one advantage I liked about it. With a turkey baster, you squeeze the ball and you release and it sucks up what it can and that's it. No, that's good. This one I could keep pulling and trying to extract more and more and more and more and more. So 
and I was able to cap the end. So the last little bit you seen in the bottom of that tank, I literally stuck a paper towel in there and pulled it out and it was barely wet and it was all gone. So it was almost nothing left on the bottom. So yeah, that's it. Uh, seems like a dumb review, but you know, it, it's something that a lot of people at home don't think about. They just go out and buy a turkey baster. You know, this will serve for a little more than a turkey baster and for 15 bucks, it's worth it in my opinion. I'd recommend getting one, so I appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I'll leave a link in the description. So I uh, greatly appreciate it. Please subscribe, like this video, and uh, see you on the next one.